Alrighty, everybody, it's that time once again for everybody's favorite, as of yet untitled, news roundup thingamabobber sort of thing. Where we talk about some gaming shiz. So let's talk about some gaming shiz. The PlayStation 5. Oh my god, ladies and gentlemen, it is real. It actually exists. People have gotten their hands on it. Well, sort of, kind of. Not really. Earlier in the week, Sony gave Japanese gamers the opportunity to experience the PlayStation 5. Now, it isn't anything crazy like Microsoft actually shipping out Series X to people's households. Uh, this was a PlayStation 5 demo event where they invited a couple of Japanese gamers, Japanese YouTubers, to test out the console, check out a couple of games, but it was in a controlled environment with Sony representatives there to guide you through the entire process. And this has opened up a dialogue online of people saying, hey, we have Microsoft over here actually shipping consoles to people's homes and then you have Sony over here during a pandemic holding an event where they want people to play the PlayStation 5 is there something Sony is hiding about the PS5 why wouldn't they want to ship this to people's houses why the secrecy and to answer that question I will say this is just Sony doing what Sony has always done if you go back to the launch of the PlayStation 4 there are various people in the media people who are you know high up on the list who didn't even get a chance to play the PlayStation 4 up until a couple of weeks from the launch of the system and while it is it's true that PlayStation is definitely a lot more of a Western brand by comparison to how it was in its earlier days. It is still a Japanese company and they still do things to appeal to the Japanese market that is kind of strange and at the same time understandable. But then they do shit like this, which is like bruh come on now yeah that was definitely one of the things that the japanese youtubers complained about when it came to this ps5 event they love the console they love how cool it is but sony going ahead and changing the button layout something that has been constant for damn near 30 years people have taken issue with and to be honest i totally understand that now while i am the exception to the rule i really don't care whether or not one button does what in terms of the input i can see if you are living in a region in a territory where this has been the norm for literal decades and they go and switch it just to appease to some type of a worldwide globalized standard i can see that being a problem however if sony does offer system level button remapping like we've seen with numerous consoles this generation of course the nintendo switch people just went crazy with that like mapping entire controller presets to just one single Joy-Con, I can see them, you know, finding solace in the fact that their buttons have changed because, well, they can just change them back. The jury is still out on that one, so we'll just have to see. But it seems like overall the impressions of the PlayStation 5 are solid. However, there's really not much else we can extrapolate from this because it was in such a closed off environment with a handful of people. So, you know, it's really nothing to write home about, unfortunately. Does Microsoft definitely have the edge in this situation when it comes down to their rolling out of the Series X consoles to the media? I would definitely say so. Yes, Microsoft has done a lot of good stuff this generation. They're definitely more pro-consumer than PlayStation. But I don't think that PlayStation doing their marketing their own way is really anti-consumer. I think a lot of people misconstrue what anti-consumer actually means. You know, just because one person is more pro-consumer, that doesn't mean that the other person who's doing things like they've always have and people have enjoyed it and it's never really been that bad, I don't necessarily think that this opportunity to have hands-on with the system is really anti-consumer. And these consoles are out anyway in a month, so it's just like, bro, who cares? Now, moving into another update about the PlayStation 5, we finally got a chance to check out the actual internals of the system with an official PlayStation 5 breakdown by Sony. They've done this before in the past, uh, more recently with the PlayStation 4 Pro, where we got to check out every single one of the components that is in the system. It kind of looks like if you were going into Ikea to buy a PlayStation 5, this is literally everything they would offer you. But the internals of the system are looking solid. Really, really good stuff. And one thing that they've definitely 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 you know went hard on is going to be the cooling and the ventilation system in the playstation 5 just look at the size of this absolute unit like my freaking god one of the biggest criticisms for the PlayStation 4 console, whether it be the original vanilla model or the PlayStation 4 Pro, is just the ventilation system. Overall, systemic, top to bottom, it freaking sucks. There will be times where I'm playing a game, trying to enjoy myself, and then that, that, that thing just kicks up for no reason. For, for actually no reason. I'm in the menu just minding my business. You know, there was a phrase I used to describe the PlayStation ventilation system. What was it? Because this motherfucker sounded like a jet engine. Ah, yeah, something like that. 
And just looking at the size of the system, my god, the a Series X may be a thick boy, but the PlayStation 5, that's one lanky motherfucker, I swear to god. And if I'm being real with y'all, I've definitely come around to the design of the system. Yes, it does look out of place in the entertainment setup. Yes, I would have rather black as opposed to white, and a system that is more low profile by comparison, but at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying, we get used to all of these designs, it's not that big a deal. I definitely do think I am going to invest in a slim model for the PS5, because just looking at how it's going to fit in my entertainment setup, setup oh this breakdown also gave us a look at the storage component for the playstation 5 as many of y'all know both the playstation 5 and xbox series x are going to be using ssd technology the ps5 is going to be going for a more general approach so basically any ssd you can put into a computer you can put into your ps5 provided it is ps5 compatible basically you have to make sure that this is approved to run at the particular speeds and then you're basically good to go which is a great move by alternative to Microsoft. Microsoft, while it is still using SSD technology, is definitely a more proprietary approach that is more accessible for the consumer, but there aren't gonna be as many brands available of SSD at the start. Now, they did clarify and say that later down the road, we are gonna be revealing more partnerships. So, the price situation for Microsoft SSD could definitely come down as time progresses but i think playstation is going to beat them to the punch considering you know it's any old ssd you can put in a pc so provided it hits those particular speeds and it's certified to work on it you're good to go which means cheaper ssds by 2021 i will say this much though having an ssd memory card is much easier by comparison and just look at this shit it's so freaking cool brings me back to the ps2 memory card days and it wouldn't be a week on the internet without some type of a controversy for some reason and apparently the controversy for today has to do with the fact that the playstation 5 if you want to stand it up vertically you have to screw on the stand for the system yeah, I, I kind of had to double, triple, quadruple reread this because I, I, I couldn't scratch my head wondering why something so simple and so basic would cause so much of a controversy. But then again, I realize this is the internet. People argued over the color of a freaking dress. This is just a conundrum. This is, this is very much so a conundrum. Are you telling me that the gaming community, the gaming community that became experts practically overnight on RDNA 2 technology, SSD read and write speeds, ray tracing, variable refresh rate, cooling and ventilation. Shit, what else am I missing? Game scalability. That, that, that was a big one over the summer. Are you telling me that that same gaming community can't use it? Screw. You see how stupid this sounds? Well, well, well. Isn't this a surprise? And shifting gears and cogs away from PlayStation over to Microsoft, we've got a lot to discuss, so we might as well start out with the most recent story. It actually broke today. GameStop and Microsoft entering into some type of a strategic partnership. That's not what I expected to wake up to. Just based off what I've been reading, it seems that Microsoft is actually going to be going into all of the GameStop stores and really modernizing their whole technological aesthetic. Because I'm sure many of y'all know if you've been into GameStops in any amount of time, whether it's the past five months or the past 15 years, you would know that their systems are definitely, definitely, definitely in need of an upgrade. Basically, it boils down to Microsoft really revamping GameStop's entire way of going about things. So they're going to be incorporating uh, Microsoft of surface devices for better um, business to consumer experiences and arguably the most important part of this entire partnership Microsoft is going to be bringing Xbox all access to GameStop stores which is actually freaking huge Xbox all access I don't think I need to explain this to y'all anymore is Microsoft's new way of bringing Xbox to you the consumer you know it doesn't fundamentally change the way you go about buying systems and buying games but it just gives you an alternative to if you want to pay a a little bit every single month you can do that as opposed to doing a lump sum and if you're consistent with it and make all your payments you don't got to worry about any type of interest which is freaking amazing xbox all access in the past has basically been sort of hit and miss not all retailers have carried it and in some situations the retailers wouldn't get the consoles back into stock but with this upcoming generation microsoft is being a lot more aggressively at pushing all access as a viable way to get into the ecosystem and they've expanded the retailer so now adding gamestop to the list and how you know they're working with microsoft so you know they're going to have this stuff supplied. It's just another avenue for you, the consumer, to get an Xbox. Gosh, this sounds like corporate speak. 
And that's basically the gist of the partnership, at least what we know. It just seems like they're going to be modernizing the GameStop stores, bringing them up to standards, at least as far as technology is concerned, and, you know, incorporating Xbox All Access and maybe a couple of other promotions. Like if they have a big launch for, you know, Halo Infinite, maybe it'll be at all the GameStop stores or, or something like that. So I don't really think there's going to be a ripple as far as, oh my gosh, this means we're never going to see PlayStation games and GameStop ever again. I don't think it's going to go to that degree, and I'll tell you why, because GameStop as a business, as a store, as a model, is dying. It, it definitely is. I mean, there's no shock and surprise to that at all. Even with the current situation the world is in right now, where people are playing games now more than ever, it's still not doing well for GameStop. The way that they've been handled, how there's a revolving door of upper level management, and how they just they treat all their employees and the staff that's over there. You know, GameStop as a business, you know, whether we like it or not, the fact that it's a brick and mortar place where you can buy video games, this has been a long time coming. And I think a lot of the people at GameStop know that. I'm, of course, referring to the upper level management of people. I'm not talking about the people who are doing the grunt work on the floor who got to deal with the fact that, you know, NBA 2K21 is going to be worth 50 cents in 2023. So, you know, those people I got no problem with because all the GameStop employees that I I've come across I got nothing but love for but all those other people up there they doing some spooky shit bro and moving into the most controversial Xbox news story of the week we of course have got to talk about the supposed Xbox Series X overheating controversy so according to the internet there was a journalist who claimed that the Xbox Series X was hot like burning hot like I could turn off my heater and save on a bill by having the Series X just warm my entire room a lot of people have basically run with that assuming that oh my gosh this means that the xbox series x is another 360 red ring of death part 2 incoming and all that crazy nonsense and under normal circumstances i would definitely do a lot more research into this particular problem considering you know these are new fancy shiny pieces of technology and the last thing we want is for this shit to potentially burn our house down but in trying to do my research i could come across nothing talking about the xbox overheating situation considering it's only coming from one source. And you would think that Microsoft sending out the console to literally hundreds of people at this point, every day it seems like someone's coming out there saying, hey, I got the Xbox Series X, y'all. I'm crying on the inside. And it just seems very weird out of all those people out there, people who are pro Xbox, people who are neutral, and some people who are straight up PlayStation gamers that got the Xbox console, nobody really talked about the overheating thing, or at least, didn't mention that as a major deal breaker. What I think is the most general, obvious answer, it's the fact that, of course, a product that is supposed to expunge heat, of course, the heat coming out from that product is indeed going to be hot. It's no different by comparison to any technological product that y'all would touch. My PC, when I'm rendering videos at 4K, this thing gets pretty hot, and the air that comes out from the system is indeed hot. But if that means that the system itself is doing what it's supposed to, and it's staying cool on the inside, then I'm okay with it. And if I had to give in two conspiracy theories, I think it's rather odd that Microsoft, the company that is literally going all in for this new generation of consoles, the company that has been through hardware disasters up the wazoo, that being the Xbox 360, I don't really think that company would knowingly send hundreds of Xbox Series X units to media outlets knowing that there is a chance that this thing could potentially burn your house down. I just, I mean, common sense. Me, myself, and I, I'm straight chilling, y'all. I got myself a console that doubles as a fridge and a space heater, bro. Game Pass is the gift that keeps on giving. And wrapping up the Xbox news stories for today, we have got an update on Xbox's smart delivery approach as it pertains to custom installations. So it's no shock to anybody that game sizes this generation have ballooned to a tremendous amount. Whether you're playing a multiplayer title or you're playing a single player experience, we've seen file sizes increase upwards of 100 gigs, if not even more, if you're adding in DLC and 4K texture packs. Uh, but Microsoft is gonna be doing something a little interesting. Again, this is nothing new. Uh, we've seen it done before, but you're gonna be able to custom install your games, like custom install what parts of the game you wanna have on your system. So let's say, for example, you're playing uh, the next Halo game, Halo Infinite. You know, it's gonna be sporting a single player campaign. Of course, it's gonna have multiplayer, and who knows, they'll probably put in some type of different battle royale mode when it's all said and done. Let's just say, for example, you have Halo Infinite, you played through the campaign, you loved it, you hated it, whatever, you don't want it on your system. You can choose to uninstall that 
portion of data and keep the multiplayer portion available. Now, this has been done before with the Halo Master Chief Collection. You can pick and choose which Halo game you wanted to install. So let's just say, for example, you didn't like Halo Reach. I don't know why you're still watching this video, but let's just say you didn't like Halo Reach. You could uninstall that one and keep all the other Halo games you do like. Now, Microsoft did say this is going to be on a game by game basis, but they are working around with their partners to eventually make this system level. And I think that's very dope. You know, it's just another example of having a great quality of life feature similar to, you know, preloading for your physical game. So by the time, you know, you go to the store, you bring your copy back, you put in your system, you're good to go. You got all the patches installed. This is just another addition to that family. And I think it's freaking amazing. And I hope they continue it. Bro, Call of Duty is a hundred. 75 gigs rest in peace series s owners and that's all i got for y'all today ladies and gentlemen post your comments down below and share your thoughts and opinions on any of the topics we discussed the playstation 5 teardown do you like this approach that sony has been doing for the playstation 5 basically uh telling us nothing until they decide to tell us something xbox's strategic partnership with gamestop do you think that this is going to negatively impact gamestop or do you think this is just a waste of money considering gamestop is already on its way out and if there was a new story this week that you wanted me to discuss post your comment down below and we'll talk about it next week but for me to you for now my name is ngs signing out and like always i will catch you guys later peace